for the last couple videos, we've talked a lot about this function that we're gonna define that will generalize the definition of a poly. We define the sigma algebras because we noticed we needed them for consistency, but we haven't yet defined this generalized volume. Well, the moment is finally here. This is the video where we define a measure. So this video will be very short, I will just give you the definition, talk a bit about it, and then give you an example. In the following videos, we will learn a lot about measures, we will learn how to master them, because measures are just essential in analysis. So what is really a measure? Well, let's say we have x, a non-empty set, so x will be different from the empty set, and we equip it with a sigma algebra m. If you don't remember what a sigma algebra is, make sure you go check out previous videos in this reproduction list. So we have x, just any set. We have a sigma algebra on x, just any one, pick one. It can be any sigma algebra you want. And we say that a measure on Usually it's written like this, x comma m, it can also be a measure on x, usually when the sigma algebra is very obvious which one it is, when there's no confusion, we usually say a measure on x, is a function, and we usually use the Greek letter mu, so it's a function mu that takes elements from our sigma algebra, and to each of those elements in the sigma algebra it gives it a positive number or zero. But this function has to satisfy certain properties because remember we have to ask for consistency. We want things we know how to measure, we want them to measure the same. So then we have these two properties. Well, the first one is that the measure of the empty set is zero, which makes perfect sense because, well, the empty set has no elements. So why would it measure anything? So the measure of the empty set is zero. And then this one is a bit more complicated, but you'll see it's very simple to grasp. We have a sequence of countable disjoint sets in M. So it's very important that here we see that this is a countable number of elements. We have a sequence of sets in the sigma algebra. So each of these e sub j is an element in our sigma algebra. Then the measure of the union of those sets is equal to the sum of the measures. And it makes sense when you think about it, because let's say I have a square. And I say, OK, well, this square has some measure, mu of square, OK? And then we take it and we start dividing it into pieces. So I will have many, many pieces. Well, when I gather all the pieces that form the square, I want to recover the full square. I don't want to miss anything out. So then the measure of the square will be equal to the sum of each of those smaller pieces. So then this definition makes a lot of sense, okay? We just want the empty set to measure nothing. And these joint sets, this is very important, notice that these sets are disjoint. So the measure of the union of these joint sets is equal to the sum of their measures. And now a few names. Well, here I said a measure on x comma m. Well, what we say is that x m is a measurable space. And when we add to this space, to this measurable space, we add the function mu that measures. This is x and its sigma algebra. And the other one is x with the sigma algebra and its measure. So x with the sigma algebra and the measure is called a measure space. And now something very important about measures is that, well, yes, the measure depends on the sigma algebra. 
right? Because it's the domain. We're gonna grab elements in the sigma algebra and for each of those, we'll give it a number between zero and infinity. Now, something important is one sigma algebra can define many measures as long as each of those functions I define over the sigma algebra to zero infinity satisfies these two properties. So a sigma algebra can define as many measures as we want, as long as they satisfy the properties. Let's go ahead and work with an example. The measure we're gonna define is called a counting measure. And what it does it's, well, let's say we have a set X and the sigma algebra we're going to consider is going to be parts of X. We saw in a previous video that parts of X is indeed a sigma algebra. And for some set E in our sigma algebra, we're going to define mu of E. So the measure, we define it as the sum over all the elements in this set of one. So what is this, really? Because in abstract it seems a bit weird, but what is, what am I doing in this calculation? Well, f first let's suppose E is just some number, some element X. Okay, what is mu of E? Well, mu of E will grab every element in E, and for each of those elements it will add one. So if E has one element, then the sum gives us one. Well, if E now was X and Y, two elements, then mu of E would be one plus one, one for X and one for Y. So mu of E is equal to two. This is obviously true for all X and Y in X. And so when we think about what this function is doing, it's just giving me the cardinality of the set. It's telling me how many elements do I have on the given set. So actually what we're doing is saying mu of E is its cardinal. So let's actually prove that this example is a measure. We have to prove it satisfies these two properties. Let's start with the first one. So we have to find the measure of the empty set. Well, let's come here to the definition. We're going to check property number one. And we ask ourselves, what is mu of the empty set? Well, the definition here says that mu of any set E is the sum over all the elements in the set of one. So mu of the empty set is gonna be the sum over all x in the empty set of one. But now this, because the empty set has no elements, this is an empty sum. And so an empty sum gives as a result zero. Perfect, it satisfies the first property. Now all we have to do is check number two and if it checks it, then we can say this function mu is a measure. The second property says that we have a countable sequence of these joint sets in M. And we have to calculate mu of the union. Okay, so we start by saying let a sequence E sub j from j equals 1 to infinity just be a sequence in our sigma algebra. Our sigma algebra, if we remember here, it was parts of x. So let's just take a sequence in parts of x disjoint. What is mu of the union? Well, mu of the union is, well, we have to come here and say for every x in the union, so for the sum over all the numbers x, all the elements x in the union from j equals 1, this is j, to infinity of e sub j, 
of 1. But this sum is the same as saying the sum from j equals 1 to infinity because of the union of the sum over all the elements x in each of the is of j's of 1. But now when we look at this particular sum, we have the sum over all the elements in some set is of j of 1. And that is the definition of mu just by saying is of j instead of e. Then this is, we have this sum outside from j equals 1 to infinity, and this we said it was mu of e sub j. Okay, this pink part right here, the rectangle, is just the measure of the e sub j set in our sequence. So then that's it. Well, if we go up and check the second property, it was that mu of the union is the sum of the mu's. So then that's exactly what we have here. Mu of the union, the measure of the union, is equal to the sum of the measures. And so we can finally say our function mu satisfies both properties, then mu is a measure. So in the following videos, we're going to work with some more examples so you can finally get used to working with this definition of a measure because it's very abstract, it's very complicated, and it's important that we fully understand it because we're going to be using it a lot, especially in the measure theory reproduction list.